Since the Linux project was first started in 1991, over 20,000 developers have contributed code to the project. Some are hackers, some are hobbyists, some are graduate students or professionals employed by large technology companies. But only one is a convicted murderer whose code is sitting on your Linux box right now. This is the story of Hans Reiser and his mail order bride. In the 21st century, Linux has become a major force in computing. It began as Linus Torvald's project announced in 1991. Fast forward 33 years, and Linux powers all of the world's top 500 supercomputers, a huge percentage of cloud systems, over 95% of the world's top 1 million web servers, and every Raspberry Pi, Chromebook, Samsung Smart TV, and Falcon 9 rocket. One of the reasons for the project's popularity is that anyone can contribute code to it. Indeed, Linux is one of the most prominent free and open source projects. The community operates as a nearly perfect meritocracy, where only the best code gets into the kernel. Some of that best code years ago was a file system developed by Hans Reiser. Reiser was born in Oakland, California in 1963 and was a computer child prodigy. He was also a square peg who didn't want to be squeezed into round holes. He dropped out of school at the age of 13 because he didn't like formal education. He was admitted to the University of California, Berkeley at the age of 15, but it took him 13 years to finally earn his degree in computer science. During this period, Reiser wrote an unpublished pen and paper role-playing game and a science fiction novel before founding Namesys, primarily to develop his own file system, Riser FS. The technical details of Riser FS are interesting if you're a file system geek, but you're probably not. At the time it was introduced into the Linux kernel, version 2.4.1, it sported some novel ideas, such as including all metadata in a B tree, as opposed to the fixed offset method common in then-current EXT2 and predecessor Berkeley Fast File System. If that last sentence didn't mean anything to you, don't feel bad. The point is that this key component of the Linux kernel had some ideas that were very advanced for their time. Writing a new file system is not for the faint of heart, and so the fact that Riser innovated in this area is technically impressive. The product saw some uptake in the Linux community. Riser FS was the default file system in SUSE Linux from version 6.4 in 2000 up to 2006's 10.2. RiserFS was never really finished, mainly because Hans Reiser isn't allowed to use a computer in prison. A couple years before RiserFS's first public release in 2001, Hans Reiser was single and looking for love. His journey to find romance coincided in time with a brief, unique period in the mail-order bride industry. Mail-order brides go back to at least the 17th century, when colonists in North America advertised in England for wives. In the 1850s, there were seven men for every one woman in parts of the American West, and these men would advertise for wives in newspapers and church flyers in big eastern cities. In the modern era, the industry boomed after World War II. The Cherry Blossoms Company did brisk business advertising Filipina brides to men in the U.S., Canada, and England. Interested men would be sent catalogs, which featured pictures and brief bios. They could select a woman and write to her, and if things went well, the man would visit her in the Philippines and then return home and apply for her visa. In the 1990s, two major developments propelled the mail-order bride industry to new heights. The first was the internet. Now, instead of looking at a grainy black-and-white photo in a printed catalog, prospective husbands could see entire colored galleries online. Instead of waiting for international postal mail, they could chat with women instantly at the speed of email. The second major development was the fall of the Soviet Union. Russia, Belarus, Ukraine, and other ex-Soviet countries opened their floodgates to Western suitors, and soon websites offering Slavic brides were doing huge business. Many men found themselves like kids in candy stores, looking at an array of beautiful women who are eager to escape crumbling post-communist economies for a new life overseas. While these options are now closed in the Putin era, from the mid-90s through the 2010s, Slavic women made steady egress to Western suitors. And of course, this was not without significant problems. Besides the obvious risks of relative strangers from different cultures trying to make a marriage work, there's also a lot of fraud. 
Many women were motivated to pretend love and devotion to any husband in order to achieve permanent residency in the United States. After two years, they're eligible to adjust their status, and some file their adjustment papers at immigration and stop at the divorce attorney on the way home, leaving behind bewildered husbands who realized they'd spent two years fooling themselves. It seems this was the case with Hans and his Russian bride, Nina. In 1998, when Reiser was 35, he met St. Petersburg native Nina Sharanova, who was 23. She served as an interpreter for a potential bride that he visited. This sort of intercepting interpreter scenario was not uncommon in this era. The interpreters not only spoke better English, but they also controlled the conversation and were in an excellent position to steer suitors away from the girl in the glossy magazine who had caught their eye to themselves by shading the translation. Hans quickly sponsored Nina for U.S. entry, and they married not long after. At the time of the marriage, Nina was already five months pregnant, and they soon had a second child. Hans was, by every description, an introverted computer nerd. What he'd imported was a wild party girl. This is an excellent example of how, in the mail-order bride world, a man can attract a woman he'd never win at home. Hans and Nina would never have crossed paths in America, and if they had, it's unlikely that freewheeling nightclub Nina would have given much thought to a relationship with Hans. But because that relationship came with a bonus of U.S. citizenship, she fell in love with him, or at least pretended to. Nina soon took over as CFO at Hans' company, Namesis, which not long after began to burn through cash at a very fast rate. He stole, stole stuff and took it to Russia, and she stole money. And, you know, at the time that, at the time that, uh, that you know, I was asking guys to take pay cuts from $5 an hour to 375 and from 29 to... 966 or whatever it was when I paid him. Um, she was spending money like crazy. She was increasing her expenditures because she had been told that the amount of money that she got during the after a divorce w was required by statute to be um, enough to maintain the lifestyle that she was accustomed to. So she figured she should make her lifestyle as fancy as possible and that would get her more money you know and she's doing this while the company is going bankrupt and she concealed all kinds of money I'll, I'll never know how much um, uh, both before the divorce and then after the divorce Reiser's father, a former Vietnam-era Army intelligence officer, sized up the new bride and warned his son that she was dishonest and suspected she was diverting money for unknown purposes. But Reiser dismissed these concerns. Nina had met one of Reiser's childhood friends, Sean Sturgeon, and convinced him to lend Namesis a substantial amount of money. Not long after, Nina and Sturgeon began a drug-fueled love affair that was sprinkled with sadomasochistic sexual escapades. As Reiser later wrote in a court filing, Nina and Sean seemed both to be searching for more and more excitement and going further and further to find it. After Nina's death, Sturgeon later confessed to killing eight people. It may have been nine, but Sturgeon wasn't sure if the last victim was alive or dead when Sturgeon left him. The confession was nonsense. Sturgeon was never arrested or convicted of any of these supposed crimes, but it does paint a portrait of the type of man Nina was attracted to. Reiser and Sturgeon's relationship soon devolved into bitter recriminations. Reiser would refer to Sturgeon as, quote, a lewd, tattooed, drug-addicted, BDSM, pimp whore with multiple personality disorder, quote, who conspired with Nina to, quote, steal the Namesis Inc. company assets, unquote. Sturgeon dismissed Reiser as a megalomaniac who thought he was the world's greatest programmer. Reiser later stated that Nina had come to America, immediately plunged into a party culture, and began belittling him, reviving memories of ostracization and bullying from his childhood. It turns out that you can arbitrage the world's economy to convince a party girl to marry you, but she's still a party girl who doesn't want to hang out with a nerd. Reiser and Nina divorced after five years of marriage in 2004. 
Hans pushed Nina, Nina filed a restraining order, and then she went on a legal rampage, accusing Reiser of everything from violence to deliberately perverting their children's minds by forcing them to play violent video games like Battlefield Vietnam. Nina was eventually granted sole custody. On Labor Day weekend 2006, Nina was reluctant to turn over the children for a visit with their father. She'd used a strategy in the past of pretending that the kids were ill and would have to skip the visitation. Riser showed up anyway, an argument ensued, and Hans later confessed that he had strangled Nina and buried her body. As typically happens with murderers, they are swiftly caught. Riser pled not guilty and fought through a trial only to be convicted. Afterwards, he agreed to a plea bargain with authorities where he revealed the location of the body in exchange for a sentencing reduction. Meanwhile, Nina's mother took the children to Russia and refused to return them to the U.S., they are now prime age for drafting into the Russian armed forces, and it's not implausible to think that they're fighting today in Ukraine. Riser FS has been deprecated from the Linux kernel. According to a commit published in early 2022, quote, Riser FS is a relatively old file system, and its development has ceased quite some years ago. Linux distributions moved away from it towards other file systems, such as BTRFS, XFS, and EXT4. To reduce the maintenance burden on cross-file system changes, let's add a deprecation notice when the file system is mounted and schedule its removal to 2025, unquote. Hans Reiser was refused parole in 2022 and will try again in 2027. If you enjoyed this story, you would love our websites, Low and Box and Low and Talk. We talk about technology and give you leads on the cheapest hosting deals on the planet. We also have interviews with industry leaders, more fascinating stories like this one, and spirited discussion. Stop by today, and thanks for watching.